Testing, testing. One, two, three. I gotta look at the thing. But I see the red and it's gone. Okay, we're recording. First time in my remote work. First time since uh, last summer after I took my dad and uh, did those 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're gonna get motorcycles and cars. Um, I, I'm gonna work on this mic. I'll get, um, I got my cable coming and I got a, a couple of different mics coming. But here we are, I did this deliberately. If you can see behind me in the, in the skyline there, it's about eight o'clock at night. And uh, it's just gorgeous over there. The sun's behind the clouds. So we're not getting the picture that I wanted. Now, if we were inside the house, I know that this would be picking up beautifully with this little roadie mic. But I think we're doing okay anyway. So, hotty hotty ho. Here we are. Here's my neighbors. Here's my, me, outside. In my, this is what I call my um, outside studio. I'm actually out here. No wind and the rain and the, except I got to I'll show that to you. If not this time, the next time. My tarp top here. One of them Z, easy up kind of things which I love. I just got it yesterday in, in Fargo. And now I can get shade. See, I don't gotta... I would have had to shoot from that direction and put the camera facing this way so it would have its back to the to the, to the um, uh, sun. But now I have to... Oh, that thing just flew over. Darn it, I'll turn it off here. Okay, it was green and my mic fell off. I, that thing is broken, the bracket on that one there. Oh boy. It's just an experiment. I don't know if I'm going to put it on the web or not. I, um, here's my new shirt, my new socks. And uh, this is what I've been building to for all this time. And there's several things I'm trying to do here. I want to film, uh, I'm trying to obviously, and I guess it's not obvious, but I'll, uh, it's, what it is is, um, for those who know, it would be obvious, and for everybody else that don't know, um, I'm trying to, what I call my discovery, my, some would call it a hypothesis or a theory, but it's not a hypothesis or a theory, it's a fact that when we look around us, all these cars and, and the whole existence, now you see a bird fly through here once in a while, that's the real existence. But what we've done, and of course this has been going on forever, is um, we've gotten, you know, we all know, man, it's all these, what we, we have considered to be these great accomplishments with our inventions and you know, cars and airplanes, and and um, I'm gonna get a lavalier mic with about a 10 foot cable, so I know then that I'm getting good audio. And then the other thing I got is I got my zoom for separate audio, and then I just clap like that and then sync up that spike and then put the so that I can sync the audio visual on two different, two different tracks. And uh, it's because you gotta have good sound. You gotta be able to hear whether you're gonna like what you're hearing or want to hear it. That's that's up for grabs. But at least I gotta. I wanna. I need to make it uh, good, solid sound. Plus, I'm gonna do music and stuff too. So there's, there's lots more to this. So here I am. Uh, great, huge discovery. Uh, discovery that sugars and uh, carbohydrates, uh, both completely unnatural to man. Well, we know about diabetes and uh, that whole thing. I, I, I wonder if I should start anew, you know, about my whole thing and, and assume I'm talking to people that are aware of where I'm at and this whole thing has progressed along, or do I need to, um, to re and re reset this? Uh, probably some of both. I, I'm not 100% certain of anything. Um, 
because nobody can hear what I'm saying, nobody can acknowledge what I'm saying, nobody can understand what I'm saying, and nobody can grasp what I'm saying, nobody can comprehend what I'm saying. And uh, so I get made out to be the, the some kind of a crackpot with some kind of a wild theory or hypotheses about sugars and carbohydrates being powerful stimulant drugs like cocaine and methamphetamine. And of course, everybody knows that's all bullshit. There ain't no truth in that. But what they don't know is that uh, the reason I use the meth and the amphetamine and cocaine is um, speed, stimulants. And obvious speed and stimulants. And very well documented, and there's 10 million pages of the psychological effects of speed and cocaine. Although they are very underestimated and very under, underestimated and very under misunderstood. And there's some rationale just popped into my mind then. Well, how come they're not onto the speed and meth? You know, they, they see people with teeth falling out and they think about that as meth. They see people committing horrendous, atrocious crimes and acts and psychopaths and everything else. And, uh, and then they give it to children for ADHD, Adderall and Ritalin. And then they got, I can't remember the name of it now, but they got some 24 hour time release one. They're having a big controversy right at the moment about the. Uh, the generic version of that and it's just a you know multi-billion dollar industry and everybody's banging like the tobacco hearings we hear a lot when they were justifying uh, poisoning you know the whole world with tobacco and standing right there all those presidents one right after the other in front of Congress no it has not been known or proven or shown to to be that detrimental to people's health and killing 500,000 people a year right then in the United States. A half a million people, more people than died in World War II. Every, you know, like a five year war or something, a horrendous World War II. And we're losing as many people to tobacco. This is like 1970 or something when them hearings took place. Um, but they were in complete denial. And, um, and that had been going on for quite a long time. So here we are with, with amphetamine and methamphetamine and cocaine. So yeah, they're illegal, and then we prescribe them to our children, six-year-olds and 10-year-olds and 15-year-olds and, and, and uh, hyperactivity, ADHD, and, and bipolar, and uh, the whole psychological medicine thing, which is just an atrocity in itself. And, uh, so the, and the reason I'm jumping on that is, is okay, if we, if we don't have a handle on amphetamines and methamphetamine, Hitler was a, uh, uh, amphetamines. Uh, the best of my knowledge, I don't know if it was 1917 or 1935, but in Germany, uh, so those scientists um, did what they do in, in the world of chemistry and came up with amphetamine. And uh, I think it might go all the way to 1917, but maybe it was only 19. No, I think it was 17. And then just when Hitler got on amphetamines, his doctors giving him energy and making him feel good. And here's an interesting thing about Adolf Hitler. And, and I don't know, Brahm or something. Uh, I, I, I get all them people mixed up. But he had um, this uh, female girl, woman. Uh, blonde haired, fairly attractive, and fairly young. Um, and cinematography and photography, moving photography, was, wasn't in its infancy. They've been doing it since they were cranking that thing, you know, in the 1800s or something, when we were still riding horses. But by 1910 and 1920, uh, the movies, you know, were not much more advanced than that. So that's, uh, you know, let's say 1915 would be exactly 100 years ago. Well, here we are with Hitler now. I don't know if Hitler was cooking in 1931, but I think he might have been, uh, his rise to power. But the amphetamines came in, and, and so we got amphetamines um, for Adolf Hitler, and then we've got this star struck. You know, when you take amphetamines, you just feel really good. That's what amphetamines do. That's what coffee does. That's what sugar does. That's what cocaine does. So, so here's Adolf, and, and he he takes this. It feels good. And here's Missy with the camera, and he getting 
posing and there's all kinds of shots of him just making all these poses and off into the wind and she became really adapt early on and I think she was um, she took speed too I'm sure and, and, and so everybody's high and, and what it is you see the beauty out here you need to describe high for the people that are not on to high this is just gorgeous right now I wish the Sun wasn't up in the clouds and you'd have a better shot over here but it's just gorgeous. It's just life is gorgeous. And children and people and dogs and birds and, and in the house, out of the house, and just, just the flesh and, and the and the plant life and animal life and, and the skies and it's just, everything is just beautiful. Normally beautiful. And then you take amphetamines or cocaine and it's just more beautiful. It's just uh, the greens and the blues and the everythings and it's just, you know, your skin and the baby and the dog and the same thing that is already beautiful to start with. It's just, you know, you could say astonishingly beautiful. I mean, that's the, the high. And, and um, so um, Hitler and he's got this famous, this is all over the web now. You could, this is all, everything I'm saying here can be just bam, 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 bam. You get the names and the, you can watch the films. But she filmed the whole rise of the Hitler's uh, uh, Nazi, um, the Third Reich, Aryan Supreme and all that bullshit. And what he did is he took this, he's on this speed now, see, and he doesn't realize that he's, he's feeling superior with his high and his rush and the birds are chirping in the skies and the people are and he's and now he's going to make he's going to improve this world he's become like a supreme leader that he's uh, like an enlightened person or something and, and, he, and he doesn't really connect the two i don't think and he doesn't connect that 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 he's on stage that's what what else got. the best description i have for the speed and amphetamine and cocaine high which is also the sugar caffeine high and even alcohol and carbohydrates um the deer say there's some deer right here we got woods and forests and and um they come out of the woods to the field over here i wish i could show you to the camera another time i will uh or even right here they come up you'll see they're there look at here they're feeding in that farmer's field over there and they're just going along. They see the cars and they see the houses and there's birds coming and going and there's, but they've, they've determined that it's safe and, and everything's all right. So they're, they're feeding. And uh, you know, there's a herd of them, young ones and the, the fawns now are pretty big by now. And uh, I don't know if they're still nursing, probably they are still nursing. And, and um, there's the yearlings from last year and and, and uh, everything is just fine. They're just enjoying eating and they're enjoying. They know where their water is. They know where their beds are. And they know where the wolves are. And they know where they're not. And, and they know how to run. They've got their defenses are just really fast. And then their senses. See, and here's where the senses kick in. And uh, all of a sudden there's a, a rustling sound. I'm, I'm making this up now. There's a rustling sound of some kind. And they just immediately... They go in their ears. You'll see their ears, just, and, and uh, they'll they'll uh, they focus to where that is. And everybody's stopped now and looking and waiting because at that moment their adrenaline is taken and, and surged into their body, and now they can really focus and see it, if that's an enemy, if it's a wolf or a man with a gun or something they need to be concerned about and not just concerned, but life and death concerned. And are they gonna bolt and, and, and you know just run like you can't believe and take in the little ones with them, but everybody's on hold for the moment here while they're determining and they're hearing and their eyes and their hear senses and, and all everything is just all the way waiting to see now, if it's sure enough, it is uh, is a wolf trying to come up on them. Now, their determination, they might say, okay, there's, they, from experience, it's go for all you're worth. And they're out of here and deer are so fast you can't even believe it. Or if it's, uh, maybe it's a man coming up and they're going to, so sometimes they'll disappear just like smoke. They'll just gently, if that's what's called for. Their adrenaline is all. now in this instance, and this is what I'm making up here, this scenario here. This turns out to be one little dog chasing another little dog, and it doesn't mean nothing. 
it's just them two and now they're headed back the other way the way they came and the deer realize everything's fine so their adrenaline goes back to normal so they're on this normal natural high and everything is beautiful and wonderful and the wind and the little ones and they're enjoying their food and everything they're doing and um, so that's my description now. Now, if they were to stay on that high, like man does by taking methamphetamine, or cocaine, or meth, or am, uh, amphetamine, methamphetamine, and, and again, like sugar and coffee, and, and, uh, and caffeine, and nicotine, and uh, it stays high, but doesn't know it. See, I mean, life is beautiful anyway, but now it's, it's really more beautiful. People will tell you, I had one of my great uncles, that he was kind of like a grandpa to me. He was a wonderful old man, Jack Manning is his name. He, and uh, he, he was born in 1895. And, and he liked his tobacco a lot. He liked his alcohol a lot, his coffee. And then we would just, he, you know, he was a man of the world and, and, and he, he discussed all these different things. He was 85 years old. and. Um, and he had been in the, in the hobo camps for 20 years. He was running moon with Hubert Humphrey in Minneapolis when he was in his early 20s, which is in 1929 during the Prohibition. So that was like, you know, 85 years ago now. But at that time, you go 1895, well, he was 35 years old. And, and uh, he liked his hooch and... and um, and it was thought that, you know, the moralists and stuff were doing all that, and there was a lot of people running the moon. I mean, it goes all the way across to Al Capone and, and the farmer and the logger and the whole moonshine thing. So we're talking coffee now, and I'm saying caffeine. I'm telling him, because I've been on to the caffeine, sugar, and all that stuff for a long time before I made this most recent discovery in 2006. So this is back in about like 1980 and 1990, I'm talking with Jack. And we're talking coffee, and he's saying, boy, take away coffee. That'd be like a day without sunshine. Well, that was a real apt description because the people that are high on caffeine they get up in the morning and they're kind of, they got they want to get their dose, you know. And um, whether it's Mountain Dew or coffee or tea, chocolate. And so they've taken now, it, it's a little bit tricky here because the people, like I'm not on caffeine, so I don't got to get more up, up there, up, up, up where you belong because I'm already okay and then I'll get to see it. In their norm. But if I'm on coffee, I think it's a little blase. And, and your body and your mind and your senses just are not all the way there because you were used to being high. So they take and get that coffee and that caffeine. Now we got sunshine. Now the birds are chirping. We're getting our dose here and fixing our no more cravings or down and withdrawals. Or, and, and, uh, and so it's, uh, but they're actually more than the normal. See, they're like the deer when the, when the um, when the dogs was there and their adrenaline surge. See, and that's where this ties into adrenaline very directly. So, um, when we're high, now here's the, the thing about it, and this is why I use Hitler and them. They're prime examples. They're extremes of, and, uh, and also that Japanese um, emperor. I uh, thought he was God. He was methamphetamines. This is the early years of amphetamines and methamphetamines. We'd all been on coffee and tea and sugar. These, all these empires were built on coffee and tea and, and uh, alcohol and nicotine and sugar and hybrid carbohydrates in the first place to make them emperors and to make uh, Hitler, it could be, before he ever had uh, any of them before him, he was part of a whole huge empire, you know, they had World War I was Germany, and uh, massive, uh, the war to end all wars, World War I, and, and uh, it was that hellacious. It's so far back for us in our generations that we don't even really understand it, but, but it was in World War II. You know, all more men died in the Civil War than all the wars combined, I know most everybody knows that. And uh, because it was both sides that they counted, and then this United States of America, you know, fighting in Washington, D.C., the Yankees and the rebels, and just killing each other by the hundreds of thousands. 
and, and um, all through the south and the north and the in between and this is all from coffee and this is all from sugar and hybrid carbohydrates and nicotine everybody's high and they don't know it it's been going on for thousands of years and that's how the Roman Empire came to be that's how the Greek um, empires came to be as how the um, Egyptians empires and their superiority they're high like the deer when the deer were sensing the, something wrong now the deer went back to normal because they're not taking no kinds of sugars and starches there's this natural amount of carbohydrate and in, 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 the, in their diet uh, that, that reacts completely different than ours is hybrid and the amount that we would normally get in the human diet we wouldn't get caffeine, we wouldn't get nicotine, and we wouldn't get um, alcohol. They don't even exist. I mean, ask a bird to get you some alcohol. There is no alcohol. And, and uh, so we've taken this mind that we see as such a great and wonderful thing, this inventive mind, and we, we've, um, you know, developed all of these things. And, and we don't know it. You know, we don't know that we're high. And, and, and uh, always high. We feed it to our babies. We, we'll give them our littlest ones. They get our mother's milk, which is real high sugar, lactose, and, and fat both. Okay, that baby's supposed to have that. Just like that newborn deer. He got to get, get himself so that he can run away from them bulls if they come around. And he's got to be able to survive if the weather makes a change all of a sudden. So if nature wants us to get our start. And boy, we're nursing to beat hell. And, and um, you know, mammals and, and, and on milk and whales and the whole works of us um, getting ourselves going. Well, that's a perfectly natural, 100% natural thing. And, and the mother, of course, she's got her juices are up during all this and, and uh, providing that milk and she's finding her food and nature's timed that to when there is food available. And um, so now, uh, the milk we will progress now into the the rest of the grown-ups diet but not right away I mean we're on nothing but milk for days and days and weeks and weeks and even months and months and, and it starts heading off into the many months but somewhere along the line uh, like for the human for instance the mother will be eating eating different I don't know maybe it's a, some branches or some grasses or seeds or something or maybe it's a, some meat that they got fish or birds or whatever it is but she's chewing of course baby's right there you know he's been sucking on a tit and mm, 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 and then baby gets the lips and the feeling and the taste there and stuff and the mother lets the baby have some of the chewed up stuff and you know she knows that the baby will choke if you get too big a piece and, and uh, so now baby's progressing on he'll over time depending on the species uh, you know some say up to two years for humans we've known some go to five some wean them when they're 12 months but at that point that heavy heavy dose of, of sugar lactose just pure sugar and a perfectly natural perfect thing in, in this instance okay now it's progressing into what would be a normal natural diet which doesn't include hybrid carbohydrates it doesn't include cow's milk and it doesn't include refined sugar and it doesn't include uh, birthday cake when they're one years old and it doesn't include chocolate it doesn't include any of that but in our society it, it does include all of that so the child has now moved into um, the, the hybrid carbohydrates and the refined sugars massively so it, the child continues to stay and be high without knowing it and the parents of course they are doing the same thing and the grandparents and aunts and uncles and neighbors and friends and everybody the business the people the teachers the educators the doctors where everybody is on all these drugs and stimulants without knowing it and and thinking that it's just a perfectly natural thing you know mark twain liked his i don't know 40 cigars a day or something and whatever amount of whiskey and and einstein they said very little he would just touch his alcohol but i think he was nicotine if i'm not mistaken and, and uh coffee sugars and starches massively so it's and this is the modern era we're talking now we'll jump way back uh, however many thousands of years the Mongolians and all see what happens is when when the deer 
got high and had all this extra energy, this adrenaline, so that they could run so fast, you can, or fight if it comes to it, if that's it, if there's something gonna come grab their baby, they're gonna fight them. And they got all this unbelievable strength. You'll hear stories about, uh, about the mother uh, or the father, you know, picking a car up to get the baby out from underneath it. It's just adrenaline. And uh, so here we are um, with all this adrenaline, but we don't know it. Now, just like the deer, it isn't always a paranoia, like because now we're high, are we always on the lookout like the deer for until they know? Because we're so, it's become so, we're so adapt at it. There, we actually have another level of adrenaline will kick in if it's another danger, it does kick in. We'll have uh, that level of adrenaline will kick in and it'll go up and down like the deer's does, like it's supposed to. But this one this, that we're high on from all the sugars and starches and that whole array of uh, stimulants, it just stays there. So, um, okay, here's what I'm getting, we become this, uh, like Adolf Hitler, we're so important and we're so supreme and we're, um, you know, we got, now we know, we know that we're the supreme race and he looks out across the, the globe and at the Jews and, and the gypsies and, and uh, London and America and the Indians and blacks and, and he just decides, well, and there's a lot of racial mixing going on and there's the whole sexuality thing and the religion thing and, and, and he decides he's got this, these solutions and um, everybody let's go and because it will all team up here he doesn't know that as he's looking for the deer see he doesn't know that he has no idea or the wolf to see if there's anything out there he think and then of course she's filming all this greatness the whole way and he's just polished and his soldiers and their their whole crazy thing and, and and it's going on in korea today it's going on right now we're tangling with russia big time obama going to take on Putin and um, you know he's got a year and a half to go here without it doesn't matter he's not a lame duck and he don't know what the hell he's doing and um, it's a, quite a difficult situation there but uh, he's fighting communists and um, you know we planted all those people in the Ukraine there and in the Radio Free Europe with the, and um, it's a real difficult thing, but, but, but we're not just the golden glory boys of, uh, of purity and democracy, and they're these evil empire. Uh, those are their border states, and, and the, the European Union, just like um, Israel, to tell you flat out, Iran, they want to annihilate us. They hate us. They loathe us, you know, and that's why they don't want them to have nuclear power and all that. Well. Russia knows that the European, uh, the Christian uh, West in, in Europe uh, and Israel hate Russia. Why do they hate Russia? Because they're atheist, communist. That's what they say. Um, and, and we've formed this thing where we're, we're, you know, it goes way, way, way back. But just recently, World War II, when they split Berlin, when we went in and, and clobbered Hitler at the very last there, we split Russia or uh, Germany with the United States took half or the West and, and the United States and, and Russia that was that that Berlin Wall or whatever it was for until Reagan said tear down that wall to Gorbachev and they did and then Germany became united again and, and got to where they're at today but Russia what I'm getting at Russia stayed Russia and we went into the into the Cold War and the aren't in China they always had been the enemy you know and uh, but there's there's this enemy see we gotta have this enemy you know and there isn't always an enemy but we're always up there so it doesn't show itself as, as paranoid but it but it is paranoid and then and then they picked up this we got God you know we have the Holy Bible and we know God and then uh, the the Muslims they have uh, their Quran and their God and uh, and uh, the Buddhist and the India and the Hindu and, and um, so they get God in here now somehow they've, they've taken and they've, they've, they know all about creations in the sky and 
Now you're getting, a, I hope you're getting some wonderful shots here. And I hope that camera didn't tilt. I didn't tighten it. I, I can't see, but I think we're all right. I think I'm in the, in the frame and it's where I wanted to be. And I just blabber on, you know, for a long time. I, I did an hour and five, eight minutes. I think I can do six hours if I wanted to. And I think it would all film and I got the memory card in there that would do it and the batteries in the, in the, in everything. I'm assuming because I moved the chair up close about like I am when I'm in the house, that, that we're getting a real good good um, volume thing here. So I'm thinking I'm not doing all this babbling and you can't be hurt. Uh, I know the mics are working. I think both the internal and and uh, the roadie. And I got a wind, wind um, what do they call it, cat's tail or something, that furry thing on the mic so that the wind won't make howling noise. We're getting the cars. You know, here's a classic one here. You can't see him because he's going that way. This is my highway that I live on, and I'm on here, and I just absolutely love it. I'm just gonna film, 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 and I'm gonna try to describe this thing that, that I feel is absolutely pertinent. And the reason I feel it's pertinent is that it ties into this whole global growth thing. You know, it ties in to start with, with, with colonialism after the, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire and the Catholic Church and the Church of England separated but um, and all the Greek and, and the Aztecs and the um, Egyptians and that whole thousands of years ago on up to 1500 when, when the king, uh, King Henry, I don't know if it was the seventh or one before him or what, but they, you know, they were, they had been colonizing um, Africa, India, it's going in there with, uh, and this is in the 1500s, there's no rifles and there's no bombs, but there are cannons, they've taken, gotten um, gunpowder, I think they had it way back in 1500, and there's definitely swords, and there's definitely uh, horses, and, and steel, and armies, and, and uh, why the Egyptian, uh, the white people, which is my race, uh, we came to this power and uh, the kingdoms and these great huge all the king's horses and all the king's men I speak to quite a bit and that actually took over between 15 up prior to 1500 I'm a little vague on I've, I know they were in India and all over and they went in up uh, towards the China this far and they went up towards Russia this far and and uh, then this thing of, you know, Columbus and discovering this new land, which the Indians had occupied for the same amount of time we had over there, probably. Nobody knows whether the continents split some 5, 10, 20,000 years ago or what, or 50,000 or 100,000 or a million years ago or whatever, all the global stuff. But what I'm getting at is the, all these armies and growth and taking over other people's lands and nations and killing and murdering to do it and not just in, in any small way they we come to the americas for instance and just you know we make it out like we're these wonderful pilgrims and and um you know and then came the 13 colony we don't we don't tell that in just very short order the indians were they didn't just start killing us they didn't do things that way to begin with if it would have been They'd see us as being enemy, then they would have had to start fighting and chase us off. If we wouldn't chase off, you know, and then it had to get bloody, then they'd get bloody. And then, and then they get, you know, killed too. If, if that's what it takes, if these people are, you know, if somebody goes marching onto my little piece of property here, I'm going to say, hey folks, this, uh, this is private property. And they would say, fuck you. And I would say, well, no, fuck you about it. You know, that's just my property and I'm up there and we're going. And, and, and um, now the Indians there, they had a, such a huge, and you hear these people come in these big boats with these big sails and they had these funny clothes and white skin and these guns and steel and mirrors. And, and uh, so they, to begin with, they thought it was interesting. So they didn't start killing. But it didn't take that long, I, I don't know the history and the numbers of all that before uh, the confrontation started and, and um, the killing started and uh, pretty soon, you know, they're just taken, you know, and they make the big thing uh, ridicule the Indians about Manhattan Island, you know, traded for some beads to these stupid Indians, you know, the Indians accepted 
some of these beads and trinkets and stuff and, and move back because there's already ships in the harbors with cannons and there's horses and guns and, and these people, it's gone beyond interesting now. And these people, there isn't just 12 men over there, there's 500 men and they all got that whatever kind of guns, I don't know if they had them old pirate guns or and the swords, and, and these people just kill. And so these villages of people, now they could all get together and they could have come in and just wiped these people out. But they chose to back off and let them have some, some territory there and just see how this thing developed. Well, they didn't know that across the water that them ships were just going to keep coming. And the ships, and I'm our armada, I mean hundreds of ships. And before it became thousands of ships and tens of thousands of men and horses. And then before they knew it, the numbers became just overwhelming. And that's when they just drove the Indians off the land. That was it. They just killed them all. They had to come this way, which would be from the east, Plymouth Rock, and Massachusetts, uh, and you know, all the way from Florida up the coast and towards the Mississippi and the west here. Of course, the whole west half, way up into the Civil War yet, uh, all the way from here to Seattle, that was all um, Indian country yet. And, and all the way down to California and Mexico. So then after the Civil War, 1865, you know, my, my grandfather was probably born about that time. Um, my grand, great grandfather would have been, I think, the guy who would have fought the war, probably. Yeah, the Civil War. If he did, I don't know where, what my ancestors did in them generations. It's lost. But um, then all these, and a bunch of them were blacks. I posted one on the website the other day, and a bunch of them, but that don't think it's just a bunch of blacks out there killing Indians, because it was whites killing Indians. And the blacks had joined the cavalry, one, at least one unit, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 men, whatever it was. And, was. and even some of the Indians turned and joined up with the, with the, the white man. He's, he's a killing machine. He's, got, he's just slaughters, men, women, and children. When the Indians fought, they didn't slaughter and kill men, women, and children. They, the men would have their skirmishes, and there'd be, you know, territorial and land disputes, and according to what the weathers and the elements and the foods and the droughts and the forest fires and all the natural things in times of plenty, you know, and who, who, who was on this part of the lake and who was on the other. But then sometimes things changed because of uh, populations and, and, and because of... Um, different elements but but they didn't just slaughter all the women babies and children they just didn't do it and that didn't exist and here are these white people they'll kill everything that breathes they'll kill everything that breathes and don't breathe I mean and, and uh, so it didn't take long before they found they're dealing with you know just monsters it'd be just like if we had monsters come from Mars or something at first there was two of them and we thought it was kind of neat and interesting and there was 20 of them and we thought boy look at that ship and next thing you know there's 2,000 ships and next thing you know they're just slaughtering us all but it's too late they got some kind of laser guns that we can't even fight and and uh, and they can disappear or something I mean it's just these people go are would over were overwhelmed and that's all the sugars and the stimulants and the carbohydrates and the nicotine and the caffeine now, they didn't have nicotine they got that here but they had caffeine and alcohol and and uh, hybrid they had been hybriding plant life and if you look back to the kings on their thrones and all their greatness, you know, and, and then their whole hierarchy, their whole, you know, the parliaments and, and the people sharing, you know, in this wealth and the people running their armies and stuff. And, and they're chopping people's heads off and hanging them on like posts or trees or something. So, you know, you know, if you're blasphemous or treason or, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're completely... Uh, taken over and for the king and of course the king everything out there uh, They're having uh, you know France and, and uh, Spain and um, England London and and several of the others are you know they've got these ships now and they found out you don't fall off the end the earth is not flat and and, and uh, we can travel and and come back and and uh, so they're out there sending out all they're building ships like, you, you know, you can't believe, and, and, and uh, in those days, those would be just unbelievable if they could cross these oceans in 30 days or something, and, and that they could carry all these uh, different goods and services and stuff. 
So that's the monstrosity. And I'm saying that monstrosity would never have existed, just like the Egyptians would have never had existed. And, you know, we're talking Egyptians, we're talking Moses, and we're talking Jesus Christ. And, and, and um, when, we're, when we're talking the Greek, I, I think before that, when we're talking the Mongolians, and there's, there's supposed to be the, um, I don't know, it's the Filipinos or the Polynesians, and, you know, they think that they got boats, different types of boats and stuff. But I don't know that they were murderers and had the, this hybriding thing, you know, hybriding you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, a hybrid apple, pure sugar. And uh, all our fruit and all our grains and all our vegetables, aside from the caffeine and alcohol and nicotine and chocolate. The high priest uh, with chocolate, that's Native American in, in Central America, Aztec and, and Maya, uh, a link to paradise. That's that Jack Manning uh, high. Uh, Less like a day without sunshine, not having that cup of coffee, if you if, if we were to do that. And so they took their caffeine in the form of chocolate, and, and it was a pure pure form, and they took the seeds and pulverized them, I don't know if they put a little water with them or what, and ingested it, and uh, they considered it to be a link to paradise. And that's that high again, that's the deer. And... Uh, and if it was just a high, that'd be fine. Everybody's like a day without sunshine. We got sunshine. That's wonderful. But then this superiority thing comes in and this inventiveness and this ruthlessness. And this ruthlessness is going on right now. We're, we're nose to nose with the USSR. And Korea is sitting over there just waiting for the blow. And the ISIS is full blown and the Boko Haram and... And, and uh, the, the, the rut, the rut is on, and, and it's going to keep going, and we're headed for World War III. So how it materializes and how it develops and what channels and roads, uh, they've many years ago, they had suggested maybe we'll have a limited nuclear war so we can find out just how terrible this monster is. And, uh, but whatever it is, and then, and then we're seven and a half billion people. And, and, and just a hundred years ago, I think we were, um, I don't know, 150 years we were one billion. I think uh, I think a uh, hundred years ago we were three, I don't think we were three billion. I think we were three billion when I was born after World War II, at the end of World War II. It's three billion then, in my lifetime, three to seven and a half. And that's just astronomical. And, and, and uh, the whole food, the whole industry, the whole economic system. And it's long been known that, it, that it's not sustainable. And now it's proven the whole, there's a billion cars. I'm sure it is a billion now. And, and then there's the airplanes and the trains and the chainsaws and lawnmowers and golf carts and this whole energy consumption thing that we're pulling out of the earth. And, and, and then it, it poisons the air massively. And you look at it, you can't see it. You know, look at here, this is just gorgeous. You go catch a fish and you're, you know, you, and you test his liver and his flesh and, and you find out he's got mercury from the coal and the acid rain and, and you drink the water, it looks good, you know, but it's got, it's full of stuff to take the food. It's all, you know, and then uh, the cancer rates and, and um, the mental disease, the social breakdown the, the, and disorder and, uh, it's a global thing. I don't like to be Mr. Pessimist. I believe that this thing that I've discovered as the core cause in this whole sophistication and culture and colonialism and, and democracy and capitalism and, and um, the, the whole killing machine, you know, of, of all these monstrous ships and airplanes and missiles and bombs and drones and and all the races and nationalities, you know, and the religious and the non-religious, all the fighting and the killing is all based on this stimulants. And just like the population itself is based on and the, and the contamination of the earth is based on. So if we could deal with that, one of the main core, I'll give you an example. I got two acres here in a little trader house. I'll show you this better film sometime. Here's a great big, you know, you, it ain't a mansion, but it's, it's supposed to have been a clubhouse for this 
big turd over here that's a retirement community that nobody wants any part of. And uh, but they got to have they want all this. They want to ride around in them golf carts and them big four wheel drives and and them big bank accounts and then fly during the winter off to the Bahamas or maybe go to Europe this year and, and all this lavish wealth. Okay, and they would wish that the world will get prosperous like that too. Not, not seeing a thing wrong. That's the footprint we're talking about. So what I'm saying, my little two acres right here, I could I could have. 50 people here and a hundred really but let's just say 50 young to old and babies and and uh let's just say my own personal family and extended family and friends and, and all that we can live beautifully you know we'll, we'll have to you know catch fish and and different ones will in, in modern times here we'll have jobs and and uh some will work at mcdonald's and you know some will be going to school and some will be fixing on cars, kind of like the Mexicans live and the Indians live, and white people to some extent, but we're more independent. See, that's an independent guy, that's an independent guy, that's an independent guy, that's an independent guy, that's an independent guy. And, and um, you know, they have their immediate family, and sometimes not that. They're off to school or off, moved to different parts of the country with their work. So the footprint is why our capitalism is no good. And, and this murdering machine and, and, and the, the wars. See, they're fighting over the resources and, the, and, and the, um, the building of more and more shopping centers and bigger and better airplanes and more roads. And, and then you gotta have trees and you gotta have all the elements and then you gotta have all the labor to do all that to make the stock market go round and round and make the banks go round and round and then you punch your credit card in and everybody makes interest on that and 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 you got of course you got to have jobs and credits and and everything is uh and and the big shots want to just keep rolling rolling and the common people want to just keep rolling rolling nobody knows that it's um you know there's a lot of people concerned with the earth and and the footprint and and the sustainability but even they, this thing that I got right here that I'm trying to describe is, is unique to myself. Um, Tom, Bunnell, me, and, and my discovery, and I think that all of the people, um, you know, communists and Christians and gays and straights and rich and poor and black and white and green and brown and and from Africa and America and Europe and China and Russia and, and Korea and, and every island and every nation can say, well, wait a minute, this prosperity, this, this, this uh, European United States, now China has come on board, well, what are they going to do? You know, and Russia's come on board to whatever extent and everybody's coming on board for one, the desire, it looks very desirable. When these people got all these fancy clothes, when the king arrives with all his entrege and all his finery and and everything, everything, you know, the commoners think, gee, that's a swell thing. They don't know that they're better off sleeping on the ground with their kids and stuff, and and, and uh, then then all that finery is just a big false existence, just like Adolf Hitler with the cameras rolling. You know, here's a crazy man, you know, with no no family and um, leading the world it just goes on and on forever I'm gonna turn this thing off I have no idea whether this thing is 30 minutes I didn't set up any clocks or anything I have no idea if it worked for sure my battery was dead but I put it on the, on the plug-in so it, it is it had been working me and it's still red I can see red and not green so this has worked and this is my first one since last summer now my dad's gone um, last summer, my number, that whole series, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, was dad. And I had been east and west and came back for his reunion. He had he got pneumonia uh, about six months after last, he died January 21st. So we were like June and July. And about this time of year and then on into July, um, and he made it six more months. If, if uh, the doctor sent him home, he had been in with pneumonia, he couldn't breathe. 
and they sent him home. And I said, well, that sometimes, Dad, you know, because how do you do from afar? And he's got my brothers out there, and he's got the neighbors helping him, and his sister, and everybody's doing their best they can by him, and the doctors from his, from his group health. And because um, I feel bad, um, I should have said, Dad, make him put you in the hospital. But I knew that sometimes if you lay with pneumonia, in a hospital bed, you're worse off than you are, you know, walking the dog. Maybe you'll walk the dog and you'll get your juices going and you'll make a comeback. Maybe dad couldn't make any more comebacks. Maybe that heart had picked as many times as it was going to tick. And he was, he was obese. He wasn't as obese as I am, but he was pretty barrel. He had a 50 inch waist and, and, um, he liked his food and his, he, he would go to the restaurants and, and, um, he had a couple of different girlfriends that he liked to visit at the restaurants, and then uh, he, and uh, I didn't really press Dad on anything in the world of eating and stuff because I didn't have to try to convince him about losing weight and going on this thing that I'm on. I'm a little younger. I turned 70 April, but anyway, Dad's gone. <clears throat> Babu is back in jail. She was home for about two months, and or three maybe. And got in a fight, and they locked her up again. She'll be, she's pregnant, and she'll be home. I think she's two months pregnant. She'll be home from lockup six weeks, the end of July. I'm hoping it isn't any longer than that. And that way, she'll at least be here for August. She's talking about coming to stay with me. I hope she does, because I think I can do her better. I mean, if she wants to go to White Earth, then she goes to White Earth. If she wants to go to her mother, or you know, wants to go to Louisiana. She's she's a grown child. She has to deal with probation until she's at least 18. So she has to deal with that. You can't just up and leave with probation. Sometimes you gotta get permission, but she'll do that. And But she's been since she was 14 years old. So she'll be going to 18, so she'll be four years. They took a 14 year old girl and locked her up inappropriately. Yeah, very inappropriately. It, uh, it's a whole big story behind that. And then put her on, um, amphetamines Adderall and then and then from the anxiety they put her on some kind of a tranquilizer because of the anxiety from the from the amphetamines and and uh, I from early on I said Babu they got you on she said yeah they got me on this for this and this for that and bipolar and I said you're none of that sweetheart get off of all that shit and I hope that she did and I hope that she does now she's pregnant so I'm hoping for her and her, her little baby that, that she doesn't have any of that. She got caught up in, um, you know, a bunch of kids and alcohol and drugs and marijuana. And, and they were running the wild side here. And, you know, they're good kids, but they were, like, so like life is a party, you know, from one party to the next party. Well, that's all right if, you, if they're going to live that lifestyle. But then they end up, you ought to see the kids. By the time they're 20 or 30 years old, half of them are dead, and the other half look like they're 40 or 50 when they're 25. And, and uh, you know, their babies and children are all... Drugs and alcohol are, is shit, just pure shit. And it's no life at all. But but the kids get caught up in that. Now I got my the younger one. She's all getting caught up in all that shit. It's hard for them because that's what all the rest of the kids are doing. And then they make it out like I'm some kind of a square, stupid, oh yeah, well you did it when you were out. But because I was dumb and didn't know any better, like if I smoked cigarettes, well, we didn't know cigarettes were as atrocious as they are. I got marijuana cracked up to be a good thing. Just relaxes you. And you ever killed anybody and it's the most atrocious drug of them all. And it ties into the Egyptians and, you know, that's their rope and their sails. And um, it's unknown, This uh, the origins, I call it, my book, which is what this whole thing is. I don't know if it's going to ever go into actual print book form or, it'll always, or, or Kindle book form or if it'll always just be my websites and uh, the, the BunnellFarm.com and the BunnellFarmBlogspot.com. And then I got the thousand on Facebook, the thousand addictions. And um, the land of a thousand addictions, but uh, this whole thing that I'm doing, there's the sun popping down, and, and uh, so a nice shot there. I don't know how this worked. I'm gonna go in and try to load it into the computer, and I'm gonna post it. 
So hello, 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 everybody, and I wish that um, I wish this thing would grow. I wish people would take me seriously because it, the the impact here is um, it's immeasurable. I, you know, we we could stop um, the growth. We could stop imposing our will on people. We could tell them, hey, let's all you know, Russia's crazy with sugars and caffeine and and uh, nicotine and, and hybrid carbohydrates. China is, you know, crazy. And, and, you know, South Africa, North Africa, East, West, Mid, mid East, Midwest, you know, and Bin Laden, he had Mountain Dew and I don't know what all, different candies and, and, and um, sugars and starches and, and, and caffeines and nicotines and, and marijuana. And, and uh, so the whole drug thing is just crazy. It's ludicrous. Now, there are those who can say there's no stopping it, but it doesn't matter if, it's, if we can't stop it, we can't stop it. But what we can do is we can, we can stop making more, 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 more education, more factories, more building, more bigger houses, more land, and more fancier clothes, and more fancier cars. It's all pure, absolute bullshit. You know, it is absolutely 100% bullshit. We could all ride bicycles or walk. Walk could be the best thing we could do, and and live beautifully. I'm not talking about having a horrible existence. You know, we gotta we gotta make our shelter, and we gotta get our food and water and stuff. But we could stop poisoning all that. So I, I'm saying that if we realize that it's all bullshit, stimulated uh, madness and insanity and greed and lust for more, Hitler. He's the king. More for him and more armies. He's going to take over Russia. He's going to take over London. And next thing you know, he'll be coming to the Americas and taking over the great one. It's all his, you know, can't get enough. And then, of course, all of it isn't just that one man. He's got all these generals and a whole entire armies, you know, and then taking over countries and they got to fight for him. And, 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 uh, and they got to do it willingly and uh, desirably. So there it is, uh, and I'm going to keep keep this thing up forever till I'm dead. And then, and then the, the diabetes, I'm trying again. I'm losing weight a little bit. I've been currently, I think I'm 10 days or something now of, of zero carb and um, meat and eggs. And then I got a bunch of steaks yesterday when I got this thing here. Um, I'll show you my gizmo here before I turn this off. I'll, I'll turn the crank and up and then I'll talk to you while I'm doing it. Ah, then I'll push that button up there. Here's me, by the way. I don't know if you can, how much of me you can see here. I'm gonna turn the camera up. Okay, here's my tarp thing. That's what's over my head there. And I gotta turn this so it'll bend. There, let's see here. Yeah, now my microphone's falling off. But that's that thing, that's that Easy Up. It's actually Z shade, which is the same as the Easy Up. And I got that because I got no trees here and I needed the, some kind of a canopy to protect from the sun so that I could sit outside here. Otherwise, I sit in that sun and I roast. And I actually, um, uh, here I was uh, shining on the cars and the trucks here. I'll do a 360 here. I actually burnt the skin right off my face the first day here a couple of months ago. So I said, well, I got to do something. Now, I hope you're getting some of the beauty here. It's a wonderful landscape. Here we're coming into my house now. My little trader house. Yeah. Got to get behind the tripod here, but I can't do it because of that thing is in my way. But I'll make it work here. Let's see here. Get my belly through here. I'm holding on to the microphone. Okay, now I'll do the other rest of the 360 here. I'll back up a little bit. And that's my U-Haul truck there. That's a 26 foot U-Haul. This is all, you know, like for the studio, I got a setup. That's a field truck. I can here's off over this direction. This is awful nice over there. Pretty that'll be I'll be a lot of background there. Now this is over in the corner here. Yeah. I don't know if I shot. Yeah, there's the 
trailer court over there. I lived in that trailer court over there for about 20 years. And then I'll go back here again. I said I'm getting part of the, the new canopy. And a little Corvette just went by. So here we are back to the chair again. It's where I was sitting. And I'll come back up here and get this thing here again. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna, gonna cut it off here. And I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't see how many minutes, but it's quite a few. And I hope you enjoy this, and, and I hope um, you become a fan of what's going on here. And I hope you tell your friends and email it all around the world. And uh, we can get on top of this, because uh, it'll, it'll be a benefit to every single one of us. So, uh, good night, goodbye, and thank you.